everybody. We here at Mustaber Studios appreciate you tuning in to see our tabletop RPG streams. Some of the content of our streams may be a bit mature and cause emotional responses in viewers. We really take the well-being of our viewers very seriously, and we want you to do what you need to if something triggers you. Mute the stream, take a break, or just skip an episode. Otherwise, if you decide to stay tuned in, we are available in chat during the streams to talk you through it if you need that. Thank you so much, and we hope you enjoy this game session. Jason Carl, Jason Carl, Jason Carl. Let's tell a vampire story. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's your boy Twitch again, bringing you the kindred news. <laughs> In Vancouver, shocking things have been happening in the sewers. <laughs> if you want to know more, you should check out Vancouver by night. <laughs> Down in New Orleans, it seems a spot where houses were burned. <laughs> I love fire when it happens. <laughs> if you want to hear about that, you should check out Sanguine underscore night. <laughs> And finally, over in D.C., it seems that annoying little Kendrick Blood Saul was killed. He had such a silly name. I think he thought he was a wrestler or something. And then, oh, the coterie went over to visit Dr. Walker. I wonder what they talked about. And now, I hear there's rumors of something big going down over in the park. Something to do with lupines. I can't wait to see what happens. This week, we're still brought to you by Luca Because, well, it's blood. We love it. Free range, ethically sourced, cruelty free, certified humane, organic blood products. Delivered by our conscientious and discreet private fleet. Secret. We make sure our stock is local, sustainable, and diverse enough to suit even the most discriminating tastes. Taste. Aluka Blood Product Services. Tapping the potential of blood. Blood. For years, Washington, D.C. was a Camarilla city under the rule of Marcus Vitel. But when it was revealed he was a La Sombra instead of the Ventru he had claimed to be, the tower sentenced him to final death. But with Kindred, things are not always as they seem, and he survived his sentence only to return a decade later to seize the city from both the Camarilla and the Sabbat. It was during his second rule that the Coterie arrived to the city. Lily Sanger, a descendant of the Toreador Helena and owner of the Succubus Club. Steve Perry, a Kaitif who only recently found out he holds flawed La Sombra blood. Locke, a gangrel raised on the streets and now owner of the bar Purgatory. And until recently, Quartermain, the Nosferatu who was now exiled from D.C. and never to return. The Coterie has been instrumental in restoring the city to Camarilla rule under the praxis of Nosferatu Stanford Warwick. Vitel relocated to Baltimore, where he has established his rule over the formerly Anarch city. Things are far from idyllic under Stanford's rule, and events have been set in motion for his praxis to end. The question remains, 
Does it matter who rules when there are powerful elders maneuvering their pieces for their own ends? Good evening and welcome to McStaver Studios DC by Night. I'm the storyteller, Shanky McStaver. And I'm Marie Lindaire, Shanky's wife, and I'm playing Lily Sanger, Clan Toreador. I'm Lance. I play Brian Miller, Kaiti, child of Esmeralda, and also servant of Sybil. I'm Kitty. I play Locke, and I am the owner of Purgatory. Wow. So Steve is now officially going to go by Brian Miller. I will still be calling you Steve all episode because I have a problem with names, and we all know this. Chaz and, and, and Co. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, last episode, you guys beat the hell out of Buzzsaw. Um, rolling 10 deep and then went out to see Dr. Walker and found that um, more than what Steve well he, I think he, he knew a lot was a lie but I think the lie goes deeper than he suspected and now we are all in Lily's SUV and Locke had a text that was blood liquor saying come to Purgatory to, to talk about the Black Spiral Dancer. So we're going to pick up right there with everybody in Lily's Cadillac. And I'll let the players have their scene. Um, just let me know when you're ready for the... Because you have enough time in the, in the car to take a while. Just let me know when you're ready to arrive. Yeah, hey, good news, everybody. Um, she holds her phone out. It's time for a, time for a woofer party. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, about time. All right. Yeah, you know what? Let's just let's just get this done. It's been, you know, hanging out there for a while. Yeah, this, and get Malik. Eh. I mean, I well, don't really care who gets Malik as long as he gets got. I am fine with with gotting him. Um, <laughs> I oh shit! I've got to pick up my my shirt. So just, it's got a special shirt for him. Oh okay. Um, so. Um, Bloodlicker wants to meet at Purgatory at some point. Okay. So, and did, what did the text say, like, tonight or tomorrow or? Sorry, it said tonight to meet, but it didn't say when the fight would actually be. Right. But... Yeah, I don't know if we're fighting. No, I'm, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, I think we're saying it's like, this isn't going to be tonight. We got to talk strategy because that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Steve, this will be the opportunity to take out Granger. Mm -hmm. And there may be a few other kindred that get got to, but. Well, this is the time to settle scores. Mm hmm. That's yeah. You can't yeah. just have a clean fight. No, no. No, no. never. No. Never. Because who's to say that? Why Malik got killed? Her, well, I mean, no, her, he's her got blood hunt. We're cool. Like a good, Malik's got a blood hunt on him. Nobody cares about yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> We're a Granger too. I mean, who can say what happened? Yeah, I mean, that that is true. That is a who knows. Um, who knows? Maybe a lupine got him. Right. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay, well, if we need to go talk with her, is she heading? She's heading over to your place. So yep. Okay, well, so I, so I just, to Jack, yeah. yeah, we, um, I tell Scott to take us to Purgatory. Um, on the way there, I text Jack, clear the back of anyone who isn't, um, Tabitha, um. Zachary's in the vehicle with you, so. Yeah, Zach's with us, like, if Tabitha. Oh, no, wait a minute, no, this no. is Walker thing, so no, Zach is not, he's already yeah. at the bar. Uh, he was hiding playing somewhere, poker. Probably. He was yeah, playing poker. Um, right. Tabitha and Zach are fine, um, Blood Liquor, of course, is fine. Um, and anyone that Blood Liquor says needs to stay is fine, but anybody who's just hanging out needs to get out of the back. And you get a text back, sure thing, boss. <sighs> I fucking hate fighting lupines. I mean, after it's great, after you can totally, like, be, I fought a fucking lupine and lived. It's the before I hate. No, the, the during is not so great either. I mean, the during, it's it's kind of easier for Gangrel because we just, you know, shut down the brain center and it's fine. Um, during fights, pff, you know, 
Who cares? Cool. Ludlow was surprisingly effective. He, yeah. I mean, does, you know, as long as he doesn't get taken to the beach again. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't ask it twice of him. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, one, you don't want to be at the beaches around here, even as a kindred. Yeah, no. I feel like you'd still get a staph infection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the beaches around here are not exactly what you... Yeah. I, um... Uh, actually, I'm gonna wait. I'll, I'll hold on that. I was okay. gonna do something, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait. So, okay, I think I'm done. Ready to uh, arrive at Purgatory? Um, ready. Okay. The SUV pulls up out front of Purgatory, and though it's a night, the club's not open. Um, Purgatory definitely is. Um, so, the bikes are all lined up. You know, once again, as as people pull up, there's a couple bikers out front smoking in front of the bar. Uh, there's an ever-present group, it seems, out front smoking. So y- you pull up and, ma'am, do you want me to just, like, like park the vehicle, drive around the block? Hey, Lock, you got parking in the back? Yeah, yeah, we got a garage. Okay, go park in the back. Yes, ma'am. And he actually just drives you. You all go to the back and he parks okay. in the garage. That way you can mm-hmm. all pile out and go right into the club. And when you come in there, blood liquor isn't there yet. But Zachary's in the back room looking. A little upset. As soon as you walk in, he's like, I had to stop the poker game. Really? Okay, look, you could have moved the poker game. If you, who is, by the way, who are you playing poker with? <sighs> Me. And, you know, Norton had come over earlier, but we took his money and he left. It was pretty funny. Um <laughs> That was, it, he'll take it back <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll get it back that, 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 but it was funny um, and then you know Swede is actually pretty good at poker though he's still not able to really I mean call you yeah. know I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, raise you you know he's his jaw um, and then a couple of the other you know Vikings I mean I figured Norton would at least have a chance you know with his powers and all but you know, oddly enough, he's not a good poker player. <laughs> you know, one, that doesn't surprise me. Two, he probably had a thing about fairness. He had a, I, you know, I don't know. He had a thing about maybe not. I seem to remember that about him, that he didn't always like to intentionally use powers to get what he wanted. Yeah, it just, it was weird to watch. A bit, but yeah, we took his money. It was great. Yeah, he'll, 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 I'm sure he'll get it back. Yeah, I'm sure he will. So, what's going on? I mean... Hey, um, have you ever fought a uh, lupine before? I mean, me and Bloodlicker argued a bit, but I I get the impression that's not what you're talking about. No. No, it's not. No, I haven't. Um, Why, is she coming over? Yeah, she's coming over. Um, Do you want to be down here? Or do you want to go upstairs? No, I think I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to let you have fun with this one. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, I yes. think that'll be the least... Conf- you know what? We've had enough confrontations in this fucking back room. You go upstairs. I'll I'll, I'll be up later. I'll fill you in. Okay, I think I'm going to go up and watch some Matlock reruns or something. Shit. I love Matlock. <laughs> and so the, the gangrel that's turned out to be... He loves old TV. Mm-hmm. He definitely likes the old shows. He wanders out of the room, leaving the coterie there. And uh, Jack pokes his head in. Everything cool, boss? Yeah, everything's fine. We're just, we have a, a meeting uh, that's coming up, so. Tabitha's in the front if you want her. Yeah, pull her pull her back here. Pull okay. Her back. And he goes back through, and about a minute later, Tabitha comes in. She's, of course, wearing her Viking jacket since the bars become Vikings again. She's right back into the midst of it. Hey. So everything's good. But I've... I, Blood liquor was hinting, but she hasn't told me. What's what's going on? Oh, oh she didn't tell you. <laughs> Worst roommate ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so we're going after some... Uh, there's a, a, a joint effort. Is that what we would call it? Yes. Joint effort um, to take out some Black Spiral dancers and um, a troublesome other gangrel. 
This one I'm not interested in saving. Malik. Mm -hmm. did, isn't it the one with the blood hunt called on him? Yes. Oh, yeah. and he did. And I'm trying to remember this. I think I recall somebody had said he was behind what happened at Elysium that time that, that when they, they raided yep. while we were there with Vitel. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're going to finally put the move on the on the problematic. Mm-hmm. By we. Well, I mean, do you want me to come? Or, I mean... Are you, are you comfortable? It's going to depend on what the plan is. I mean, I'm not wanting to go in there and wade into to, to Lupine. That's, that's just not pleasant I, for any of us. I think the Lupines are going to be taken care of by the Lupines and Art. I mean... If we're there as wranglers or something, sure, I'm fine with it, but... I don't know what the full plan is yet, so... And why did you say that the door flies open to the back room and coming in full swagger is actually blood liquor? Oh, okay. She's, uh... Her aggression definitely is up because she's normally not quite that bad about it. Mm. And she comes swag... Just striding through she's got this this move movement to her body that screams predator yeah. she looks at you Locke. she looks Hi. at tabitha she looks back at Locke. where is he <laughs> he okay first um he's he's under my protection at the moment Um, he's here. Do you want to see him? I'm not going to kill him. Just so okay. you know. Okay, okay. I trust you on that, yeah. What I plan to do, I'm just going to look at him really hard. Okay. <laughs> and make him cry. <laughs> oh. But we can wait if you want. I mean, do you want to have that to be the cap of your evening or the appetizer? Do you know you got a point? We'll save it for later. Okay. <laughs> because I'm kind of riled up right now because of what's going on. It, it, internal politics business. But Mother sent me to, to, to arrange this because she says it's time. It's happening tomorrow night. Okay. She worked out some stuff with, with Art. She worked out some stuff with Karina, of all people, um, to give you some cover for what's going on. Um do you know they're shooting some sort of movie over in the Potomac Creek Park tomorrow? Hmm. Yeah, it's some, some new new series coming out about, you know, werewolves and, you know, taking over the nation's capital. It's a great... Uh, they think it's going to be a blockbuster. That's what I was told. <laughs> I think it's a bunch of crock of shit and anyone who believes it are sheep, but... I mean, <laughs> they got our... <laughs> yeah, but that's what I was told. Okay. We're... Our pack is gearing up. We're going to go in with art, of course. Mm -hmm. But the general idea is we want the kindred of DC for, to support it, to hang out outside the park around, you know, the, the border of it. So if any try to get out and escape, they're intercepted. Okay. Or at least slowed down long enough for one of the other packs to catch up and handle the business. Mm-hmm. We know this is technically not your fight, so we wouldn't even have Art involved, but he insisted. So. Okay. This shouldn't be too bad for, for your leeches. I mean, it shouldn't. But, you know, there's always a chance somebody escaping and then, you know. And when she said leeches, Tabitha looked at her and you see her elbow come over and she's Elbows, blood liquor. Yeah, one. Lily's cutting eyes at her for yeah, that. I just raise an eyebrow. Like, no, it's fine. Tabitha, Hiya. like, elbows her a bit. And you see blood liquor look a little bit embarrassed about it. But then she goes right back to it. I'm pretty sure, I mean, you guys should be able to handle that part. Just, I mean, there's, I know it should be enough kindred. Just slow them down at least, or at least let us know they're coming. Uh, I mean, y'all, when you're all, um, uh, um, you can't use cell phones, can you? 
Have you ever tried to use a phone with claws? It doesn't. Yeah, actually, actually, one time they got stuck and it really sucked for like for a day. Yeah, you, you scratch your screen up and you, it doesn't work very well. So how do we let you know? Um, I run a club. We have air horns. <gasps> I like that. I like air horns. Yeah, you still had a whole box of them. Mm-hmm. That's right. Okay. She, she's where her hope is. I mean, we outnumber them two to one. Um. We're going to keep some people out around the rim, not like with you guys, but close enough that they can intercept if somebody, you know, I guess air horn sounds pretty good. Sounds off an air horn. Mm -hmm. Um, Air horns and a werewolf taking over the nation's capital movie. That's. Wow. (laughs) Hollywood just has no originality anymore. That's true. I've been there. They're just doing weird things, but. So that's the general plan. It shouldn't be too hard. I think you guys, you know, you, I think you kindred should be able to handle it. And I think, you know, that'll call, solve this problem. And then Blood Luka looks at Lily and goes, I know you have an interest in one particular individual in there. I do. Um, If we come across him, we can't promise you he's going to be left for you. I'm fine with that. I don't care who kills him. I just want him dead. Just wanted to make sure that was out there. If you happen to get his eye teeth, I'd love to have them. Well, we're not (laughs) known to leave much behind when we... That's fine. We're not very good at target designation, which is why we're trying to keep Mm -hmm. most of you out on the edges of it. But considering considering he can turn into an owl, I'm sure he'll find a way to get away. Yeah, I'm sure. And I think that's... We've got some additional support from that to call in some people that can try Mm -hmm. to watch the skies at least a little. Good. Like where owls? No, not where... You'd be surprised there aren't any of those. (laughs) But... Esmeralda's coming to watch some of the sky, and we actually know a couple... Kindred from outside of town. Some of the independents I've we've arranged with Karina because we can't even talk to your so-called prince. Um, that, that we're going to have some some airborne, unaligned gangrel up in the air. Tabitha goes, yeah, I, I help put people in contact. I I gave Karina a number of one, and then you know you know word of mouth with gangrel lock. It just yeah. just spreads down, and you know we talk and. Should be yeah, enough to watch for a owl. No. Should be. A owl. The rest of them are toast. As long as nobody lets them break free. Mm-hmm. It sounds workable. Yeah. It sounds like an excellent plan. And so now, of course, I am so still very much more worried. Oh, of course, because everything can go wrong. <laughs> and Tabitha just looks over and goes, yeah, a, no plan survives contact, you know, and as I learned in the wars, you think you have everything under control, and that's when someone yanks the rug out from under you. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. So tomorrow what time? Probably t- to be nice to your kind 10 o'clock. Okay. I mean, we've got a, there's apparently a permit for for this filming. Uh, It's supposed to go from like 9, 8 p.m. until like 4 in the morning because of nighttime shoot, you know. So that's the the idea. Okay. I don't know how Karina managed to pull a permit that quick. (sighs) It's it's just like (laughs) Karina. Mm -hmm. Karina. Karina's the best. Yeah, there's not going to be any actual cameras for this filming. Mm, but no, there's fake cameras. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Those there's, are easy to get. Prop cameras, I, I mean, come on. No, nothing breachy about real cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we don't want to be on camera either. No. Because there's enough talk of the crack o Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the conspiracy theories are all over the place from now. I bet. That's what pissed Mother off. I bet. You know, we don't like to be seen any more than you guys do. And- mm-hmm. One of us in, you know, uh, form, as Locke says, 
running down the street <laughs> is and, a bit of a problem. Yeah. Ripping off the back end of car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. Okay. Anything you want me to relay to mother or to, I mean, I'm just, I want to warn you ahead of time. When we go, er, we're not really very good at, at target acquisition or sorry, uh, mm -hmm. friendly uh, identification of a friendly, I think you should say. So that's why we're trying to keep you guys out of. Understood. Yeah. Tell mother that we appreciate this. I mean, we're doing us all a favor, I think. After Indeed, that. it's mutually beneficial, but it is appreciated. Yeah, that, that kind of heat we don't want coming down on everybody. And running down the street, that's a problem for us all right now. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody in the pack is happy with us working with you. But even aside from a few dissenters, which had to be dealt with, uh, the rest of the pack is, is in agreement that this is one case where it's in everyone's interest mm -hmm. uh, to deal with the bigger threat. Indeed. So. Got nothing else. I've got other stops to make tonight. I will make sure that those of us on the periphery have air horns to notify your people when there's a breach. I've got to go. I mean, Karina's notify most of your kind, but okay. I've got a few others of ours that, because, you know, not everybody lives. We don't all just live in a park. That's just not how this works. <laughs> As you can tell, and she looks over at Tabitha, you know, we, we actually live in houses, mm -hmm. apartments, places like that. So I've got to go and gather up the pack. Okay. And Blood Licker still looking angry as hell. You think she's getting psyched up for what's coming. Uh, stomps out of the room, I guess. But there's a, there's a, a movement of a predator to her. And I, I look over oh, Locke. She doesn't want to go. So, well, yeah. I guess she could find her or something. Well, <laughs> Locke, do you want to show her where he is? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think she's planning, uh, the reason she was walking out, I think she plans to talk with him after the Black Spiral shit is done. Oh, okay. Good. Because she's a little angry right now, and probably, you're right, it should be a dessert thing, because the way she is right now, she might lose it and then brr, out on him. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh. She doesn't spell the thing for him, does he? Tabitha's yeah. like, no, she just... She wants to make sure he's properly put in his place. Did you tell her about the whole thing? Which thing? The 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 thing. Um, the you know bond thing. I tried to explain it to her, but she doesn't understand how that works. Mm -hmm. So, um. I don't think she understands the bond part. I wonder if it could be done to one of them. <laughs> I mean, Tabitha's is like it works on mortals. They can be blood bound. Uh -huh. Kendrick can be blood bound. Uh huh. Would you really want one of them blood bound though? Because mm. my knowledge of the bond now, I've only been on the receiving end of a bond. I've not been the bonder. But wouldn't if one of them was bound? I'm going to roll eye things, detection. They do things to, you know, to please you. I mean, that's what I did with Vitel. Was I was doing things to please him? Would you really want a Lupine doing things to please you? Because their idea of what pleases people isn't always normal. I mean, you would know. I got five on lie detection. Because Lily knows something <laughs> that Locke has told her. Uh -huh. She is um, partially being truthful. She's not being 100%. Yeah, because Lily knows that she had art bound to her. She's being partially truthful. Mm -hmm. in this one. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to pocket that. She's in mixed companies. Of course, she's, of course she's hiding her little dirty laundry. 
<laughs> and Tabitha looks over at Seems odd that Art wants to go in with him. It's not Art. Okay, but if what all these guesses and people, you know, it, it's not Art, it's somebody else. If any of that's true, why would they want to go in? It's part of a plan. It's part of one of Dorian's fucking plans. Mm, oh, that's a good point. I bet you money. I mean, it's obvious Dorian has to be involved because Esmeralda has been tagged <laughs> as errorized to watch. <laughs> and the only one who can tag that one in... Dorian. Is Dorian. And then independent gangrels brought in from outside of town. And I know I gave a number to Karina, but I also know who those independents. Mm-hmm. And I'd have been shocked if Blood Liquor got more than one willing to step foot in the city because they're out there for a reason. They don't want to be in the city. Mm -hmm. And if they've gotten more than that, there has to be some sort of uh, enticement. Well, Lily was totally pulling that insight from her vision she had where the spider with the web and Dorian being the little spider wrapping all the people up. So that was where she got that insight. Dorian doesn't from. want to be Prince, right? That's not a thing. Tabitha just looks this. I'm sure if he wanted to have been Prince, he could have been Prince. Well, maybe let's be Prince Maker. Well, they call it King Maker. That's what Venture do. But understand if whatever is in art becomes Prince, we are all fucked. I'm still not quite fully up on this what's inside art talk shall I tell it to her yeah I think we just need to like just explain yeah. it let me tell you a story Tabitha well, wait 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 <laughs> I'm not sure I'm should I sit down for this story go yes, ahead because you might do. fall out if you if you don't uh, yeah. okay I, I don't like story time when it's put that way and she yeah. goes over and finds a seat next to her yet in one of the little back tables so, the hippie was a construct created by Dorian to hide something in Art's head. That something is, I'm assuming, based on what intelligence I've been able to gather, that Art ate someone older and way more powerful than him and lost. But why would Art do that? that Considering it's an old venture, he might have been dominated into doing it. So, no, I've been taught, yeah, Locke has tried to explain to me it's not really Art, it's somebody else. But you're saying Dorian's... Mm hmm I mean, I knew the old man was, I mean, he's weird. He's creepy. Definitely something weird about him. But I didn't realize he's been... I mean, he, he... You're trying to tell me he stole art. Just stole a kindred. Mm-hmm. How has it been a kindred a little while? That shouldn't be possible. <laughs> but... I assume you guys have seen enough to, to at least prove it to you that this is what's going on. I wouldn't say it unless I believed it was true. So what is Dorian trying to... That I have no idea. I mean, it seems like a risky plan. Because if what you're saying is true, that, you know... It, Art was taken that could have failed and... Oh, it very easily could have failed. But I also know that Dorian is a descendant of that ancient Ventru. Big risks, big reward kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Are you sure this is not just all... This sounds like some Sabbat shit. Mm. Why couldn't it be? Seriously. Now, see, I didn't like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's be real, Tabitha. Sabah aren't the only one who diablerized here. 
No, I'm talking the... We like to claim the higher ground on that, but we do it too. I fought the Sabbat. Their normal (laughs) method when fucking with Camarilla cities is destabilize, undermine, and then send in the shovel heads. That's how I fought the wars. Uh, The shovel heads are expendable, but you first destabilize and undermine so that the people there or the kindred there are off balance so that you can try to push them out. Uh, I don't believe it's a push out. Truly. What was that? Ah, lock. I mean, destabilize, undermine, sounds a lot like DC right now. Mm Mm-hmm. So we've got two parts of it. However, I've been working my ass off to ensure that after all this shit gets dealt with, that we have stability. I'm worried about the gap. I understand. So. So am I. It just seems odd for a Ventru to be part of. I'll be truthful. But then again, the Ventru, there's a reason they're in charge of the Camarilla. There's a reason. They, I mean, they look down on us for a reason. So, I mean, I can see it, but they're after something. And a clan is not a person. A That's person true. Is very different than a clan. That's true, and you can't guess a madman. Mm-hmm. This has just been a pleasant night. Aren't they all? I think I'm going to go out in the front and play some darts with some of the Vikings. Um, we we found the dart. We got the dartboard with Vital's head on it back. So we're going to. I mean, it's old school. It doesn't apply as much anymore. But the Vikings don't know that. They don't understand. They never understood the picture's purpose. So we're going to go throw some darts at it. And then Tabitha leaves the room, leaving the coterie, just sitting here to make it, you know, whatever plans they have this night. One whole day. Ah, well, I mean, we just came out of a fucking fight. What prep do we need to do? Yeah, I guess that's true. (laughs) It's not like I can get more dragon's breath bullets anytime soon. So, Uh if ever at all, at this point. Or for us to make many more silver bullets. Well, we we could I assume during that two-month gap... We were working Uh, on that. Remember I said we... If there's anything that conceivably could have been done in a two-month gap... That could have been done in two months. You had started making silver bullets um, like months, 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 months ago, as soon as you realized that Malik was hiding with Black Spiral. So, I can assume during that two-month... Uh, you didn't have that much that was going on other than moving your haven. True. You could have easily made more silver bullets. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, that I think we're covered on. But yeah, I'm down to three. But I figure that's enough to put a hurting on Malik. And that can at least help. Are we bringing any of your boys? Fuck no. I yeah. am not bringing... It even hyped up mortals to a damn kindred and lupine fight. No. Oh my god. No, I'm just asking. They would all get sniper, like destroyed. Right? <laughs> so it's such a bad yeah. idea. Even the sniper, they could close that. They could close ranks on that and destroy him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, those boys are going to stay right at my freaking public haven and and freaking keep an eye on things. Okay. Just in case people want to get uppity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, no. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure that the boys gather up all the air horns we have to make sure. And should I let Karina know that I have them so she can get them distributed? Yeah. Okay. I don't think they're not a secret weapon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me call her real quick and I pick up my phone and call Karina. Air horns of doom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you call her and uh, it rings two times. 
Hey, Lily, what you got? Hey, Karina. So I hear about the big plans for the movie tomorrow. Yeah, we get big movie shoot, big, big shoot, short I'm wonder- term, tight budget. You yeah, know, that kind yeah, of thing. yeah. Um, I'm wondering if you think that um, some of us hanging out on the set might be benefiting from having some air horns. I've arranged for some walkie talkies, um, but, you know, they're open, mm-hmm. open channel, of course, but that. The air horns probably would work to, to notify um, any of the extras inside the park. Yeah, yeah, to get their attention. Right, because they, they, they're kind of, we don't give extras walkie-talkies. That's just for the, mm-hmm. the you know, the security and lights and people yeah. around the edge, you know. The, well, I, I've done some work in Hollywood before, so I, I'm a kind of aware of how, they th- how these things go. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead. I'll, I'll get my guys to uh, gather up because, I mean, you know, well, at my club, parties do sometimes get a little cra- loud and crazy. Um, so I do have a, quite the supply of air horns I can donate. Okay, well, I'll send somebody by in a little bit. Okay, perfect. Uh, one of my people will come pick them up and then... Okay. We'll pass them around for there uh, because I'm I'm busy night coordinating because oh, of course term I've got to get everyone together of course I've got to uh, figure out where they're going to go um, I want you guys on the your group you're going to watch the main entrance okay that's just that's what you guys okay. have got to do and I've got an idea for how to space the rest of the people involved out okay um, sounds great I I trust your judgment on this truly yeah I just so. figured you guys uh. Because it's right by the, you guys are going to be watching right by the marina. Okay. Um, that way, you know, if somebody makes a break there, unfortunately, we don't have a way to watch the water itself. But I don't think too many people are going to be swimming to Potomac. Ew. I think they're going to try to make a run streetwise. <laughs> that would make sense. Well, yeah. And, and, and you know, we just got to make sure that we keep them all within the parameters of the set so that they don't accidentally go somewhere and we get fined for it. So. Well, Blood Liquor, you know, is, and George have, have contributed the rats to the, to the Good. water line. Good. So that at least if any do make it out the water line, we'll find out after the fact. But we'll know they made it by jumping into the water. Because if there's one thing you can find all along the, the shore of the Potomac. It's going to be rats. Oh, yes. Lots oh, yes. And lots of Lots rats. of them. Joy. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Karina. And I will let the boys know that you'll be sending someone by for the air horns. No problem. Okay. Bye-bye. And she gets her, hangs up the phone. Okay. So she's going to pick up the air horns, and we're going to be stationed by the marina near the entrance of the park. Okay. Do you think I should bring Zach? That is up to you. I mean... He's really loyal, and he's good in a fight. And I feel like we at least need a next little extra oomph um, in case something comes after you. I don't think we need to bring Tabitha. Uh, No, I think Tabitha is... How do you think she's going to take Ranger being resolved? I think the biggest problem with Tabitha is that I'm not sure she's ready to fight. Again. Um, My concern is how would she feel about taking out Granger when that's not the target? Uh, to be fair, like, you know, I think they all kind of viewed him as the necessary asshole. <laughs> you know, like everybody <laughs> loved Norton. Even Norton's like, yeah, he's kind of an asshole. My bad. So I'm not. But he's still for- my best friend. So I'm on his cock. Yeah. Yes, I know. Well, you know what? Who hasn't? Who, how many times have I had that conversation with some chick in my life about he's an asshole, but I love him? It so works many- for friends, too, sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's always so. the fact that Norton is his sire, so. hmm So. Oh, yeah. Okay. I need- well, I need to um, take care of some stuff. Um, yeah. So. I guess I will see you guys tomorrow. Do you want to come by the club and then we leave from there to go to the yeah. marina? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. So, Lily goes to leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, unless you're leaving Steve here with no vehicle. Uh, matter of fact, actually, you need to take a lock back to the club as well right now because oh, because her car is there. Is still so come on at the club. I, yeah, yep. I guess that's true. Let's yeah. ride over so we can get y'all's vehicles. Yeah. You drop me off at Southeast need to hunt yep i want to want to try to heal something first then go hunting okay 
We can do that. We can drop you off in Southeast. Or well, you, you can take your car, but it's easier if you're on foot. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, so I tell Scott to swing by Southeast and then take us back to the club. You sure, ma'am? That's a bad neighborhood. You know what? It's just dropping off Steve. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're just throwing Steve out of the car. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> just slow down to five miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's kind of sturdy. You can keep it. Yeah, in. he's. I'm pretty sure people will take a look at him, and once they get a look in his eyes, they'll just run the other the way. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. Whatever you, uh, whatever you say, ma'am. We'll drop okay. him off there. Okay. Steve, you are fine, right? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, okay. For now. For now. So, Steve is dropped off. If you guys want to have any talk on your way there to Steve, or is the car pretty quiet at this point? Everyone contemplating what's going on. Oh, no, I'm thinking, I'm processing what I need to take care of before this fight happens. Okay. So, not much to say in the car. It's a kind of a quiet, Mm -hmm. awkward kind of moment where everyone's thinking about what's coming. And then Steve is dropped off at Southeast. And the car returns to Purgatory. No. Or, sorry, to uh, uh, Succubus Club Mm -hmm. so that Locke can get her car. And Lily and Locke are riding, of course, by themselves in the car. Do y'all want to have any kind of a talk during this trip? Now's your chance for some girl talk if you have any girl talk things you need to to relate. But while y'all are thinking that, Steve, go ahead and roll your hunting roll for I'll go first. I want to do a heal first. Okay, roll your heal. Roll one rouse check. Wrong one. I get hungrier. What's your hunger at? It, now it's three. Now but it's you three. did heal two. Heal but you heal two blocks. Yeah. Okay, now I will go hunting. And your beast when you healed. That's right. Let's get top shape. We're going to take from him everything. We're going to take his arms. We're going to take his legs. We're going to watch him shrivel and die. And we're going to leave him just a stump before you eat him. It'll be good. Let's do this. Finally. And it's odd because it's not her voice. It's mm-hmm. the voice you've always heard. You heard as your beast before. Mm-hmm. Um, you swore your oath to her. Her voice is totally gone now. Not even your beast is speaking in her tones. So how many successes? Okay, let's find out. Two. Three. Three? That's enough because Southeast is considered the rack. It's the crime-ridden, painful little place to to live, honestly. And uh, you have no problem finding... uh, Actually, in, in this case, you found one of the homeless sleeping... In an alley. Nobody around. Out cold. Nice and easy chance to get it. And when you drink the blood, there's a... You can taste that this this individual is not happy with his lot in life. He's been, you know, homeless a long time, trapped, nothing that ever went their way. And uh, the melancholy is really seeped into the blood. And... You're going to get a bonus die to fortitude or obfuscate until you feed again. Fortitude. Okay. And that's due to the the potence of the, or the uh, resonance of the blood. So now you still have two more wounds left and you took how much blood from him? Two. Two? Okay. And I'm going to roll. One more? Yeah. Okay. So you're at one hunger. And I made it. You made it, so you have healed up your wounds. That that fresh infusion of Vitae allowed you to close the last of your your injuries. So that now your your undead flesh is whole again. Ah, oh, that feels better. And it leaves Locke and Lily in the SUV in case they want to have a talk. So like Leland and Wayland? Rusty. Huh? Wayland? Wayland. Yeah. Oh, where did I get Leland? I don't know. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> uh, well, are, are they, do you know if they're in on this or like? I'm hoping not. Oh, it's just curious. Um, I'm hoping now that they've gotten their vengeance on the thin bloods that attack their haven that they will decide to leave town. Are you just asking them to leave? I mean, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that you will ask them to leave. Yes. Um, I've already done it once and they refused. Well, Wayland refused. He's a stubborn little shit. 
<laughs> I, <hear>, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but you want, do you want them to leave just while things are like crazy? Like, I asked yes, them. when eyes are not on them because there is a Ventru Archon in town, presumably his Justicar as well. And Wayland was an idiot that embraced without permission. Agreed on all points. So he needs to get the fuck out of town. I mean, are you, but do you think like things will calm down and you'll want him to come back or like, cause you mean, you liked him. I do. I, <laughs> I mean, you went through a lot, lot, lot to get lot, him back. I, I got him back so that he could be reuni- reunited with his child. His child needs him. You were tired of being stepmom? I, well, not not necessarily that, but I'm not his sire. Yeah. Even if I was, you know, he, if, if he was my ward and I educated him to ensure he could survive his version of eternity, it's not the same as being the one that embraced him, you know, especially with that kind of embrace. It was one done out of love. Waylon couldn't let him go. So... They are very close, and they need to be together. And as much as I adore both of those damn fool boys, I... I, They need to go. Wayland is too stubborn and too impulsive. He will end up getting destroyed in Camarilla cities. He needs to be an Anarch. So you, like, go and just stay gone? Just go and stay gone. It's a pity. It is a pity. Raphael would be a fantastic Camarilla Torador. Hmm. He's a far more reasonable sort. But Wayland is impulsive, stubborn, stubborn to the point of stupid at times. And honestly, he was never brought up right because his sire abandoned him, denied that she created him. He was never taught to... Temper impulses when necessary. Hmm. So that you can survive the strict structure of the Camarilla. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. And I just know that if they stay. Sanford's going to sell my ass out and I, it's going to sell out those two as well as he gets taken down. Yeah. And if that happens, a Ventru Archon and whatever fucking Justicar is in town is going to ensure that those two get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's... that's no, I was just, I was just curious because you hung out with him a lot. Um, yeah. So, so no, I... I, I I don't want them involved in this fight. I'd like for them to use the opportunity to get the fuck out. Yeah, just not a lot of Toridor in town anymore. That can be fixed. There's not a lot of anybody in town anymore. The body counts have been rising. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, eventually, like, all of us will get killed and they'll just be, like, a thin blood town. And yeah, just, you know, that's fine. Or, maybe or, that's fine. Or Whatever. we get some stability in this town and attract kindred to this town. Because the problem is the city has been fucking ape shit for so long that nobody wants to live here. Let's be real. It's still DC. It is. Like, it's still a fucking shithole. It's a shithole. I know. <laughs> but we can make it. We can paint a turd. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I- <laughs> No. <laughs> We're just not going to attract the best and the brightest. Uh, well, but it will it will it will attract the ambitious. Yes, it will attract that admittedly people who want that. So, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it's not it's not a bad town because if you're not ambitious, like you pretty much just get ignored or at least right. what it used to be. Um and then well, I'm I'm hoping things will go back to that. That Yeah. I mean, let the ambitious play their games and, and, you know, those that aren't ambitious just lay low. Yeah. 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 So. But yeah, so that's my hope. But of course, I've seen my track record with Wayland. He doesn't like to listen to me. Twice now when I've told him to run, he hasn't. And so 
Yeah. I, I'm honestly going. Uh, Locke, I fucking love him. Yeah, I thought. But you know, I, I, I can't. You I just maybe you should, because there's not much. We have a long time, but we also have a lot of time where a lot of that we're not going to have much left of who we are. I can't lose another one. I just can't. And if he refuses to leave, I've got to put the walls back up. You could always go with him at some point. I'm sure you could convince him to, like, take a vacation. Leaving forever is pretty big, but saying, hey, could you just chill out in New York City for a few weeks? Oh, God. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Wait, what's in New York City? That's where he's from, and he's wounded. Oh, oh yeah. maybe so, Miami. Yeah, yeah, maybe Miami. Maybe, okay, yeah, Miami's know, better. Something, yeah. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, um, may, maybe somewhere not Camarilla, just for a little while, you know. Sow those wild oats a little bit temper yourself <laughs> and you know maybe join them maybe join them yeah it's but yeah because i mean ultimately it's something that most gangrel aren't aware of within clan toreador it's it's kind of similar to the nosferatu it's clan than sect we are toreador it doesn't matter what our sect is we are all toreador hmm. So it's not that my opinion of him would be less because he goes abstract. So. But yeah, so I don't know, but just that that's that's the conundrum I'm in. I'm in love with a guy that is too stubborn to fucking listen to a woman when she knows what she's talking about. Well, I mean, that's a lot of them are dumb. That's some kind of coming to that that conclusion that a lot of them are just even when they're smart, they're so fucking dumb. Yes. Um, and it's so frustrating because I know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> is, is he still bonded or? Did the yes, whole... he's still bonded, but he and has, he still won't do what you say. I know because he is God. fucking willful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's noted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not a full bond. It has started to... It has started to wane, but it was a full bond. Because I feel, I feel bad about... I feel bad about that. I mean, I did it to save him, and, uh, you know, and now it's like... I mean, he's nice, and it's just... Oh, darling, that bad. is such an act. Huh? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure he's he's bonded. He's probably not as willful as someone like Wayland is, but he is so jetting as soon as you wear that bond off. Yeah, and I mean, I plan on, I promised him I'd do it once things cooled down. Yeah. Because I just, I, he's jetting. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I've seen him. He knows he's cute. He knows he's charming. It, mm. He's a walkaway Joe. Mm -hmm. and, That's I mean, exactly at, what he is. I mean, and to be honest, he fucked around with blood mm -hmm. liquor. Like, and he's an idiot, too. He's an idiot. <laughs> he's a pretty idiot. I hate it. Yes. I hate it. I hate it. Why couldn't he? <laughs> he's a pretty idiot. Yes, he is. Oh. <sighs> All right. Well, I better get back. Yeah, better, you get back. I, I've got to uh, get the. I've got to get the boys to uh, make sure that the stuff gets to Karina, and then I've got to go talk to Wayland and Raphael. Fun. We all get to talk to our stubborn people. Mm -hmm. Yay! Our stubborn, broken people. Wonderful. Yes. Yay. Oh well, you have a good evening. You too, dear. Get in her car. So you you arrive back at Circus Club, and Locke takes her car back to Purgatory. And Lily uh, gets the box ready for mm -hmm. people for Karina. Now, Wayland and Raphael are currently at your other haven. Mm -hmm. So you're planning to go and, mm -hmm. and go see them. And yep. we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Steve, this is where you came back to the club. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the night 
right here where when you came back to the club, Lily wasn't there. And you found Esmeralda on the roof. Okay. Which was last week's vignette. Right. And where you had your talk with her because that vignette happened before the raid on the park. Mm -hmm. And to summarize for those who didn't see it, he had his talk with Esmeralda. And Esmeralda is willing to help him find the man he was. But she's also urged him to not kill Granger because in kindred society, death begets death and it starts a cycle. And it's a cycle the kindred have followed for centuries. And she feels it needs to stop. In a lot of ways, that shows her increased humanity compared to most mm -hmm. of the kindred of DC. But um, that's when those events happen, which gives Steve the rest of the night, I think, to contemplate in a lot of ways what Esmeralda and him talked about. And Lily rides over back to her old haven, mm -hmm. or her, her hidden haven. My hidden her, haven. Mm -hmm. Her Corvette that, you know, was kept in the garage. It stays there just so she can go back and forth. Real subtle car to sneak back and forth to a haven, everyone. <laughs> um, it's fine. But It's fine. And you return to your haven, and of course, Wayland and Raphael are there because they'd already hunted. Mm -hmm. When you come in, uh, it's obvious they're talking. You're pretty sure it's something about a magic. Because mm. you hear them talking about this is where we do the switch, mm -hmm. and this is, you know where you're over here, you're going to get the focus this way. And then this is where we're going to do a switch and we'll need an assistant. And that, and when you come in, they kind of look at you and wave, but then they're, you can tell they're deep in the, in that creative process coming up with a trick. Okay. And I throw a die on the floor. And I'm I am debating. I'm going to roll a die because I am debating if I'm going to interrupt this process or if I'm going to let it play out. Plug my headphone back in because I literally. And I let it play out. Okay. I'm not going to disturb that creative process. I know how frustrating there that is. Go. I yanked my own head earpiece out. That's always great. Feels good on the ear too. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay, so you wait a bit and. After about five more minutes, they kind of look at each other and they look at you and look at each other. And Raphael goes, just talk to her. And Waylon goes, comes over and goes, we can tell something's wrong. You've got I, that look on your face. I don't want here. to interrupt your process. You've got the look on your face. We know what that look on your face means. I have a trick for you, boys. Okay, now I'm interested. A disappearing act. Tomorrow, there's some shit going down that's going to have everyone very distracted. Well, goes, I know. I told Karina that I would help uh, watch. Um, oh, no, you're not. One of the, the borders of the park. Oh, no, you're not. Um, kind of told her I would, though, but. Oh, no, you're not. Why not? I've told you why not. I've told you what is in this city and what it means. You are aware that I am a very intelligent woman, especially with the political spectrum of the Camarilla. You will take the opportunity to get you and your child out of this city. Take a vacation. Until things get smoothed over. Can we compromise? I told Karina I hope. But right after it's over. If you survive it. From what I'm told, we're just supposed to stay at the border. We shouldn't have a problem with it. It's We're mainly there to signal if someone tries to break free. It the, should be okay. The problem is... If you are there, eyes are on you. Okay, let's work a better deal then. If anyone tries to come after us, we'll run. Is that good? Kind of gave my word to Karina. So if no one tries to come after you, you're not going to run. See, I, I know these little play on words thing, and I'm no fool. No, I will run. I, I gave Karina my word. She's not the kind of person you exactly 
back away from when you've said you'll do something. We'll watch it, and then afterwards we'll go. If someone tries to take us, we'll go. I'm trying to work with you here, because, you know, I'm trying to keep you happy, but... You know, it's kind of a... I told her I'd, I'd watch... Um, it's the south side of the park. I don't like this one bit. I can see all the different ways that it's going to fail. I mean, the plan sounds viable from what I've been told. We watch. Anyone comes out. We let somebody know. I mean... Something you don't know about me, Wayland. And I'm going to roll premonition. Okay, do your rounds check. Where she goes. <laughs> For someone who tells me at a game, I hate premonition. I, I can't stand that damn skill. I don't. I wish I'd never bought it. She sure rolls a lot. Well, she bought it. May as well use it. Was well, that if you have it and don't use it, you might lose it, huh? Yeah. That is four, eight. Nine, ten. Ten. Wow. That's a pretty good premonition. Now, what are you looking for info about? I am looking for info. I'm focused on his compromise solution. Your vision shifts. And you're standing... In the center of woods, but instead of being surrounded by trees, it's definitely buildings. They're just tinier. It's almost like a forest of rough townhouses and clubs and bars. And as you stand in it, you see the little pieces of paper blowing black back and forth. But as the pieces of paper are being blown black back and forth, you see what appears to be wind moving them. They're actually not stirred by the wind. They're clashing and banging into each other. Some of the papers disappear. Some don't. And as you look around in this forest of buildings, you see a pattern of streetlights that loom over it. That border around the park. And they're all lit. And as you watch... Some of them dim a bit and then return to brightness. Others stay lit the whole time. And at no point during this do you see any of the street lights go out. And then your vision fades. Okay, and you're back. Like some assistance with interpretation? The lights around the border. Uh, based on your successes, the lights that you see, the street lights around the border, are the kindred posted to watch the exterior of the park. And none of the lights went out in your vision. I have true sight. number of our clan do? No, this is ridiculously accurate. Um, <sighs> you will, both of you, leave as soon as it's over. Yep, that's the deal. We'll, I'm going to roll lie detection. Her. Okay, roll. <laughs> She's determined to make sure there's no loophole here. Mm -hmm. Four, five, six, seven. You don't? No lie? No lie. 
if you are bullshitting me, you will have hell on your hands. I know. Okay. Listen. I'm doing this because I fucking care. I know, but listen. You know what I told you. You I'm... will not take... Mm -mm. You will not bear my punishment for what I have done. You will not bear the punishment for Raphael for what he has done. But we will leave once this is is done. I don't intend to bear your punishment. I will never bear your punishment. Gotten yourself in enough trouble. Oh, I'm aware. Over what I've done. I'm aware. And I'm sure Lily has many other things she says to him. Oh, yeah. Because he's a stubborn little shit. Yes, he is. And the combined Wayland and Renee is not as charming as Renee, as Wayland, mm -mm. but not as vulgar and crass as Renee. Mm -hmm. And there's a mix of the two that makes him stubborn. A little bit of that street swagger in him. But at the same time, he's still got that Torador's flair about thing. And he's still, you know, there's a bit of that charm still there. But I don't think it's going to work on Lily tonight. And he's not going to use it because he knows better. <laughs> Lily's tired of the bullshit. <laughs> and this is where we're going to take a break. Okay. <laughs> with Lily trying once again to convince Waylon to leave. And this time. Maybe appears, she did. He appears by what she can tell to have run. And Steve, having met with Esmeralda, having a, a thing to contemplate and lock to, to, you know, do her thing and decide, is that coming with her or not? <laughs> you know, because while it's obvious now that Karina, she said she's coordinating other kindred to watch other areas. Zach was one of the outside independents and wouldn't have been in, in Karina's contact list. No, no. So what? it's whether Locke wants to bring him with her, whether she wants a uh, mm -hmm. bear boy to be there and I we'll mean... go to break and we'll be back in 10 minutes and see you then splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow within and burrow within splinters of my soul Cut through your skin and burrow within, and burrow within. Splinters of my soul cut through your skin and burrow within, and burrow.
through your skin and burrow within and burrow within splinters of my soul Myself, though I fear you've heard my name, and that you've heard the story, heard the story of Countess Bathory. History is told by the victors, heroic warriors, and mad kings. Will you hear my story, hear my story from the lips of Bathory? Powerful, a widow with bullet 
political rivals keen to destroy me and take my property. My plea was never offered, all my confessors were all tortured. Oh, how they destroyed me. Shut me up and told a story of a bitch called Bathory. Let's a king demon, queen of hell, sadistic killer, a monster tale, bathing in the blood of virgin. Welcome back. Uh, before we went on break, of course, everyone had planned up on the, the Black Spiral Dancers and Lily tried to convince Waylon to run and Locke and Lily had a, a girl talk episode while Steve hunted and then came back and had his talk with Esmeralda, which was left Steve contemplative and we're going to pick up from there. Uh, any, I, I know Lily said she wanted to just let Angelique and them know yep. of the plan. So basically, she would have called Angelique and told her about the situation as as obscurely as she could. Well, the, I mean, the general. <laughs> I tell her there's this movie being shot, you know, and 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 this is what. But she said, yeah, she was uh, she was enlisted by Karina. Good. They have their assigned position. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure where um you know what's his name is going to be, but you know I'm sure you'll run across him somewhere. Mm -hmm. She plans to get his autograph. Good. <laughs> So, and we'll pick up from there with any last minute preps that particular night. Anyone else want to hunt before? Locke is going to have to talk to Tabitha and to Zach. Okay. So you come back to Purgatory, of course, and there's both still there. Tabitha's been just owning the, uh, all the Vikings at dart. She's actually a pretty damn good dart player. Uh -huh. But kindred reactions kind of make it unfair. Oh. Fuck it, whatever. You know what? Um, and Zach, when you come back, you know, you have to go get him out of the room because he's he's like, is she gone yet? Is she? I mean, nobody told me. She's gone. Do expect to have a conversation with her at some point. But she has said she won't kill you. So. There's a lot of things <laughs> she can do to me that don't involve me dead. Uh, true, true, true. But you know what? Um, I can heal I'm, for most. Yeah, yeah. So, see, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, you've been through worse. Um, so, okay. Uh, and she pulls them to somewhere private. Okay. Um, Go back so, to your office? Yeah, so tomorrow night. Um, Zach, I do want you with us. I've got a tiny bit of squishy on the team. So, and then she looks at Tabitha. She's like, 
here's the thing. Can you be, I don't want you right there. Can you be close? To where I can call you in if I need you to get people out. Thank you. I. Karina asked me if I could watch, but... If Karina, what, where did Karina ask you? Well, to she be? asked me, and I told her I didn't feel comfortable. Uh -huh. Um, with that because, um, honestly, I, she wanted to pair me with Granger. Yeah, no. And I'm like, N no. So, um, I'm gonna. I mean, she didn't have anything for me specifically, but. So I figured I would just hang here at the bar and keep an eye on things. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if you want. Where would you prefer? Stay at the bar and just watch things or be close, not in the fight, as backup for if somebody needs to get pulled out? We could, how about me and Jack hang back? Yeah. Close, but not too close so that if you need us, me and Jack can come in to, to, to help out. Because I know Jack wasn't asked either, but I think that's more of because she's not sure, you know, his position in the city kind of thing, whether he's really vested like some of the others. And yeah. so, I mean, we could be close. It's a lot better company than Granger. And that way we can, if you need us, you know, block or two back maybe and just. Yeah. So you don't like, you don't like hanging with Granger. He's a dick. Uh, true. I mean, and could you imagine stuck alone with him? It just... It... Mm. Uh, yeah, we've had uncomfortable situations with him. I mean, I wouldn't mind it if it was Norton, because, you know, he's oh. weird, but you can deal with him, but... Granger's... Mm. I mean, he, he does just that weird mental shit on you without even knowing he's doing it sometimes. It's just... Yeah, yeah, he tried that on me. Yeah, it's just not pleasant. That was that was mm. fun. All right, so you'll hang like a block or two back, um, and if in we'll coordinate better. But if you hear like three blasts on an air horn, come in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. We should be able to hear, it, you know. To wave, wave. Yeah, we we wave more like than a couple blocks. blocks. Yeah. yeah. yeah Otherwise, because seems... you're gonna hear single blasts. Hopefully, and... uh, hopefully we don't hear any. I mean, I mean, it's us. It's us. There's always bullshit. Okay. It's never nothing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. We attract the fuckery. We so, do. um, all right, we'll go, um, chill out, um, have, uh, ha have a night with, uh, let's, you know, um, have fun. Um, you know, just, you know, anyway, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to my haven and, chill out and just get ready for tomorrow I am going to go hunt okay go hunt is Ludlow in play in this scene or don't know you haven't asked to see if he's in play for this I got seven you got seven okay you don't have any problem hunting um interesting Put my glasses on. It's a good roll. And it's seven with a crit. Okay. That's good to see. And so you go and spend part of the night working the club. Mm -hmm. Not yours, of course, because yours is closed. Mm -hmm. But you get out and, I mean, just a couple bars at least... Hop, moderately hopping you find a, a suitable victim to lure you know out of the club and when you feed on him this is definitely somebody who's been having a good time that night they've really been enjoying themselves and the sanguine taste of the blood yes I rolled that too it's what? twice in one night I've rolled resonances Locke's like maybe I should hunt now yeah shit man so you get a bonus it's actually hunting. not the one I wanted I wanted a boost in my celerity nope <laughs> Blood, blood sorcery and presence night. Yep. 
I mean, well, having seven hunting, dice too, in presence. No, because you got to pull, you got to pull the <laughs> point off, and she can't at the moment. Mm. I mean, she could pull it and spit it, but you know. That's yeah, not that's right. Because you only need one hunger. Yep. So <laughs> who knows what tomorrow brings? That's right. Anything else anyone wants to do this last night? Oh, before? and I only took one off of the one off of them. Yeah, okay. just to top off. Okay. Um, my prep is actually for tomorrow. Okay. After I wake up. <clears throat> okay. Um. I do want to, just on the off chance that I have to come up in, into conflict with, with Granger, um, I want to basically epoxy the um, the earbuds in my ear so that I can't get any outside. They'll come out the next night, Locke. You can rip them off, take superficial ah. damage, and then let them, it'll heal up anyway, so it won't matter. Yeah. Oh my God. It still hurts. <laughs> The, the epoxy your short range communicator earbuds into your ear. Mm -hmm. to okay. Lock out an outside sound. Yeah. That's going to make it difficult to hear someone well, coming up on but, you, all, though. Well, I would. I don't know if I can do this or not. Maybe I have to roll for it. Um, Having it like an extra, like audio receiver, like that I can put, like an, an external ear that like transmits into the. Uh, so I can hear people around me talking. So you're going to use a sensitive mic. It's going to give you a penalty to discerning mm -hmm. anything at a distance. But I know what you're trying to do uh, because a dominate powers by voice do not work over an electronic device. And by filtering mm -hmm. all the incoming sounds that Granger says through an electronic device, his dominate powers, unless he has star magnetism, don't work. Don't work. Mm -hmm. Very ingenious. Um, you will get a penalty to some of your hearing because by using a mic right. that sensitive, you're picking up everything. Everything. Right. Would it be reasonable to assume that Lily, being, you know, that she is involved in the music type scenes and stuff like that, she would have noise canceling headphones? You can get on. Um, you're muted. Okay. You're Lily. muted. Okay. Sorry. I was asking the storyteller if it would be reasonable to assume that Lily would have noise canceling headphones. So. And the DJ's got to have them. Yeah, I'm sure exactly. She's, she had some. I, I'm sure I have some. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll grab yeah, however. The DJ uses them at the club. So yeah. I'll, I'll have whatever extras we have, I'll take with me so that I have a few. So that you can just put them on. Mm -hmm. As we need it. As you need them. Over, yeah. over the earbud because they're over the earphones. Right. You can hide yeah. them with the earbud under it. Mm hmm. But yeah, I get your idea as everyone's decided because it's truthful, unless you have star magnetism, dominate does not work over an electronic device. Mm -hmm. So by blocking, blocking off, out the auditory receptor of the yeah. sound. <laughs> Does anyone give Locke any ideas about this? Or is Locke just going, I got an unswayable mind, they can suck it. Uh, no, actually, no, Lily's, Lily's going to yeah. text and say, uh, at, are we rousing for the next night? Yeah, go ahead and do your, okay. well, this is still the night before. Okay, so I'm going to text everybody before we bed down and say, um, I've got some noise canceling headphones at the club that it's, it's not meta -y, by the way because i know this is a discussion that us uh, lily and steve had, had mm -hmm. offline before about ways mm -hmm. to prevent dominate from working mm -hmm. so they all had this plan going into it because not all of us have unswayable mind but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you um, know pitting steve against lily or steve against anybody is a bad idea <laughs> so um Locke's response would be well you know do we want one person to still just be hearing normal or do we want because that <sighs> well there's going to be several of us all in the area so you know between us we should be able to hear whatever's going on i mean that's up to you if you're willing to risk it i am willing to risk it Okay. Um, but I want to put some on um, Zach. Okay. I, I should have enough. Yeah, unless he goes bare. Unless he's, you know. Okay. And I say I, I, say I should have enough. <laughs> That'd be bad. Yeah, it would be. No, I'm trying to think of how that would work. I would. He would have to. <laughs> the way I interpret so the rules as storyteller, uh, <laughs> he would have to use uh, feral whispers. Yeah. To dominate the bear because he's in bear form. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So English wouldn't work. Right. Or regular language wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Man, unless the bear was could, trained. Man, right now would be a real good time to be able to be a wolf. Be, it'd be pretty sweet. There are times See? when it'd be handy. 
Yeah, so this was the night before. Now, uh, with that emotion, Lily goes to gather up the noise-canceling headphones. Steve gets some epoxy ready for the next morning. No, I send a text to uh, Thomas to gather up the extra headphones from the DJ okay. um, and have them ready for me for tomorrow. Because yeah, you're at your, your I, other house. I'm at my haven. I, yeah. I don't need to go back to my club to gather this. I have people. <laughs> And Steve, so, <laughs> Steve had gone back to your club at first after hunting, but he's after having his talk with Esmeralda and being a little thinking about it, he's made sure he's got what he needs before he leaves to go to his haven for the night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And everyone beds down for the night. Anything you want to say, talk to Locke before you had your Tabitha and Zachary thing? Yeah, she's had, she's said her piece. Okay. So. so everyone goes to sleep for the daylight as the sun rises. and Mortals go about their everyday tasks and then go to bed at night not realizing what lurks among them and with the setting of the sun the kindred rise everyone gets to roll their rouse checks to wake succeeded good two successes succeeded oh there we go so everyone is uh not waking up hunger let me check zach he succeeded as well so that's pretty good for the group (laughs) so you all wake up and you know you don't have long to prepare but Steve's basically taken one of the microphones and pushed a, an inline amp to it to gain it way higher than it should be and glued earbuds into his ear, which is okay. That's a sure way to make sure you can't hear around him. Mm-hmm. Lily's going to noise canceling headphone. She's got two extra pairs just in case, though Locke's not going to use one. You might as well hold them. Okay. I have two extra. Yep. Okay. So. It comes time, and Thomas informs you that, yes, somebody came by and picked up the the air horns. Good. Uh, They left four of them here. Okay, I'll take those with me. Yep. Um, You know why you each need your own, she's not sure of, but, I mean, there was a whole box of them, so. Okay. Okay. Hey, better to have extra just in case. And you know where you're supposed to set up? Mm Mm-hmm. Good. I want you boys staying here. Keep an eye on the place. Ma'am, is it dangerous? (laughs) <laughs> Darling, me just existing is dangerous. No, I knew I shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> okay. I would like to think I will be fine. Well, do what you say. We'll stay here. You call us if you need us. Indeed. I... I it gives me some peace of mind to know that you boys will be here to keep an eye on this place because while my kind are distracted others may see it as an opportunity okay Okay. so thank you and the coterie piles up and an escalade and heads over to the marina now when you get there of course you get near the entrance and you see there's a few lights set up but they're off. It's like there's, there's in case you need them. It's looking kind of like a movie set, but not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the lights are there, but powered off. And uh, when you arrive, the only other one there is Blood Liquor standing at the entrance. Mm. And when you guys arrive, of course, she immediately comes over and gives Tabitha a hug and kind of gives Locke kind of a, a half assed hug. Oh, and inst- actually. Uh-huh. And then stares <laughs> at Zachary. Just. <laughs> And you can feel the heat rating in your offer. And Zachary just kind of kind of steps behind Locke. <laughs> <laughs> and is kind of deciding, you know. You're the meat shield. <laughs> okay. If he okay. is, was in wolf form, his tail would definitely be tucked <laughs> right about now. You can see him kind of shrink in on himself. And then Blood Liquor nods, of course, to Lily and Steve. They'll be here shortly. I, People are now showing up on here, which means I know they know we're out here. They had to have seen us. Um, The marina just touches on it, so they know we're here. So we're going to be, this is going to kick off real quick. And you can hear a motorcycle, multiples, coming in the distance. She goes, that should be them. Did I get my jacket? Yes. Okay. You did get the jacket that Grigori made for you, which was uh, worded against Lupine. Just Lupine? And Kendra. Okay, thank you. Because mm-hmm. that was my request. <laughs> yep. That was the request you so, had made. Yeah, and so I, I just whisper to Steve, don't grab my arms. Um, And that whisper, because she's close to you, 
comes out pretty damn loud. No. <laughs> <laughs> because you've gained up the mics. I have the headphones around my neck. They're not up on me yet. And as you're sitting here, um, you see coming around the corner motorcycles. Mm -hmm. There looks to be about close to 20, maybe two dozen, hard to tell. And there's one at the front of the motorcycle pack you definitely recognize. It's a cruiser style Harley. Mm. And the man on it has got a Prussian helmet on his head. And as it gets closer, you also notice that there is a large axe sticking, uh, well, like hung off his belt as he's riding this bike. And it's an axe you have never seen before. But you know what it is. It's been described to you. Mm -hmm. It's Bjorn's axe. Yep. And as the bikes pull up, you see, I mean, there's a whole gang behind Art. He's leading this pack of what you assume are all lupine. And he's in the front. Mm. And when he, they pull up abreast of everybody and stop. the bikes get lined up. I mean, they pull up almost like a formation. You Almost as if they practiced it, but there's no way in hell they could have. And Art gets off the bike, and he gives Steve a look that unsettles you a bit. Roll up your uh, wits awareness, or no, intelligence awareness, Steve. And awareness... Two. Okay. Anyone else watching Art carefully when he's Oh, I am. In? Uh -huh. Like a fucking Wits hawk. awareness from the other two as well. Wits awareness? Yep. Or Yeah, for you two, wits awareness. Because he wasn't staring at you. He was staring at Steve. Three successes. I got five. Five? There was something... You don't know what it was, Locke. It kind of flashed. You didn't get quite an angle uh -huh. to see it, Lily. You saw for the... I mean, it's almost a trick of the light, but the eyes flashed gold when they stared at Steve. But it was only... It had to have been a trick of the light. It, it was so No, brief. it's not. <laughs> and Art, look, after staring at Steve a minute, looks over at Locke. He looks at Lily. He even looks at Zachary, and it's totally emotionless on his face. Until he grabs the handle of this axe. And when he grabs it, his lip curls very slightly. As if it hurt him to touch it. And the axe is exactly what you would have expected somebody named Bjorn to carry. It's a large, it looks to be real, single-bladed battle axe. And he hefts it in his hand. Let's go. And without a word to any of you, him and the lupine that were behind him on the bikes, walk into this, through the marina, heading toward the wooded area that's adjacent to it. And with him, blood liquor just kind of gives you guys a wave. The one you don't see in this group, mother, does not appear to be in this mm. group. Yeah. You'd have recognized her. But all the rest seem to move in, and as they enter the park, you can see them fanning out in groups of three as they move into the park, leaving the coterie outside this marina, budding the forested section of Potomac Park with waiting for something to happen. So what is the Coterie's plan here? Zach, as soon as everyone walks off, Zach looks over and goes, that's fucking scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh -huh. mean, but whoever heard of a gang girl fighting with an axe? Um, I mean. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It makes. He's compensating. I've seen that axe. <laughs> I know where that axe came from. I know where it came from. Uh -huh. That's Bjorn's axe. Why does he have Bjorn's axe? 
And why is he using Bjorn's axe? Because he's gangrel and he's not supposed to use an axe. I mean, yeah. Town's gotten weird. See, see why I wanted you kind of out of out of the out of the way. I was out of the city, and now I'm back in the city. And well, you know what? You know what? Now I know where we know where you are, and still get through this. So we're just gonna stand. I mean, we're expected to stand we're, around. What? What? I, I mean, I don't. I understand the, the general plan, here, but like, yeah, it's we are waiting to see the stra- what stragglers try to jet, and we take out what stragglers. I honestly expect um, that there's gonna be some kindred scores settled tonight. And I'm assuming at this point Tabitha and Jack have taken their place. You're pretty sure, because they followed you guys over here, but they stopped before you got there. Now, the odd thing is, there's no walkie-talkies here that Karina had said would be left for the groups around the border. Hmm. Hmm. You want to call her to... Text Karina. Okay. Did you miss a shipment here, darling? No. Granger's bringing them. Said he'd drop them off to you. Uh Uh-oh. Are you fucking kidding me? No, why? What's up? Nothing, darling. Just that guy's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, okay, and she turns to, um... She takes back, true, but a useful asshole. Um, turns De- back... I send back, debatable. <laughs> so do you tell them? Do I tell, tell I tell, I tell them, Granger's bringing the walkie-talkies. Oh. Okay. <sighs> Remember, I, I said scores, Zach. That's yep. Lily that. puts on the headphones. <laughs> At one of them, and here are your headphones. One Unless you're going to bear up. Actually, you might want to be. Would you be more comfortable just being bare at the moment? Movie or not, I think me standing here as a bear might. I hand him some headphones and be like, put these on then. Why am I wearing headphones? Um, um, because he can. Warp your mind with his words. He's one of those. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put these on now. Just if you need me to, if you need me to bear out, just point it at something, and you know, just give a hand signal or something, because I won't be to hear shit. But I just, <laughs> I'll do what y'all do. And, you know, you know, I got you locked. Whatever happens, I, I'll be right there. Okay. He puts the headphone back on. I also go to the back of the vehicle and get my vest out. Okay. And put that on as well. Okay. So Lily puts on her, her bulletproof vest. And, and then put my jacket on over top of it. And put the jacket on on top of it. And the coterie is there, waiting to see what happens. I'd like wits awareness from everybody. Steve, you are at a two die penalty. Two die? Okay. Yep. It's a matter of distance. Two. Oh. Five. Five, six. Six? Very good. Both of y'all, very good. As you're standing there, you... Locke and Lily both hear... There seems to be some sort of an odd commotion, you think. Um, maybe a dog, maybe a cat. Something got startled inside the marina itself. Not far from where you guys are. It's hard to see exactly where. You think it's behind one of the, the big boats on the dock is blocking your view of where it started from. But uh-huh. something, maybe one of the pier rats or a couple of them got startled by something and went into the water because, you know, rats or something. But it's not far from you guys. Locke, do you want to go check that? Because I know you can yeah. talk to critters. Um, Locke is going to first rouse toughness okay. and also rouse feral whispers. So let's see how much hungrier she gets. <laughs> Where did Slinky tonight? You got Slinky with you tonight? Um, I have. Yeah, actually, I would have Slinky. Um, you know, Slinky is nearby. Slinky is also instructed that to leave the lupines the fuck alone, but that he may be, she, she may be asked to come in on some kindred. Because because Slinky knows what a lupine smells like because well, blood yeah. liquor brought her to you, so she's been around lupine quite a bit. Yep, I get one hungrier. One hungrier. I have roused for fleetness. You okay? And your beast lock tells you. Who cares what they are? Why are you out here? The challenge is in there. We should be in there fighting with the rest of them. 
letting ourselves run wild, being what we are. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's like we're getting delivery. It's fine. It's fine. She goes and she's going to go check it out. Okay. This thing is. <laughs> and uh, Zach starts following behind you, unless you motion him to stay with the group. Um, yeah, stay with them. Stay okay, with you them. Just... I'll be right back. Uh, Slinky, you're with me. And okay. go over there, and she goes finds whatever animals. Deck stealth. Are there. All right. Now roll for Slinky. Good thing Slinky's a wolf. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, this would be a time for wolf form. <laughs> oh man, it would be. Three. Okay. Now let me roll for the one slinking over there. As you come around, looking at that section and behind where you think you heard the animals or the noises, uh, as you come around that that side look around the boat, you catch just barely the glimpse of something going into the water uh, beside the boat. But it's not the river-facing side of the pier. It's towards the other side of the shore, which is near where, you know, the entrance to the marina. Like, they're trying to use the boats as cover to get even closer to the entrance before they come out of the water. Uh-huh. You don't know, you didn't get an idea of who... Uh, Roughly man-sized? And we're on comms, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, some dude in the water. Dude-sized. And Steve, you can hear it because you've got your comms earbud on one side and your mic you're listening to everything on the other. Okay. And just just in you know, assuming confidence, I did wear my my vest and bring okay, my regular confidence. weapons. No punch knives this time because there's no kind. Yeah, it's not a punch knife kind of a fight, I don't think. No. So, what is everybody doing? Rouse for toughness. <laughs> Get hungrier. Now we're going to count this as one scene. Okay. Unless there's a big break and a pause where nothing happens, this will all be one scene. Okay. So everyone knows for their abilities. So there's no question after the fact. Okay. I signal uh, to Zach, uh-huh. stay, and I point eyes mm-hmm. on the entrance. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And I go head towards lock. I need special eyes. So, you're heading to where you saw a lot go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you can roll deck stealth. Okay. Not a very good skill for Lily. No, but I have fleetness up. But you have fleetness up. Mm-hmm. I will let you add... Well, no, fleetness is quick, but not silent. Okay. So, roll... But, it, but it works on my dex rolls. But not for stealth. It's about being quiet, not... Okay. Okay. Yep, it'll help I ha- anything... I have, a, I have a dot in stealth. Yep. It'll help you with anything How about... Far can I blink over there? <laughs> yes, actually, you could. It's a straight shot. Okay. <laughs> I rouse, I get, I'm okay, and I'm going to run, roll my dex athletics, which I get my bonus for death athletics. Yep. Three, two, three. Yep. That's really quick. Could be really quick and noisy, but it wouldn't matter. It's so fast. It's, it's so like, fast, I'd be there before they could react. And any noise you make would be... A microsecond of noise when you think about it. Four, five, six. Six? Okay, you blink over and lock. You're where you were going around the corner. Suddenly, Lily's beside you. Uh, yeah, that's new, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and like... Slinky jumps a little bit. It kind of surprised even the wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, fast now. Cool. Uh, and she points. And you see where she's pointing. It's between some of the boats on the pier. You guys are now... Uh, if they jumped in the water and they're slinking down the boats, the person who went in the water is actually closer to the entrance um, than you are in terms of exact relationship. Though with Blink, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do uh, Scry the Soul. Okay, you can try it. I got four. Don't pick up anything. Nothing's there. The boat. The, if they're there, they're behind the boats, so or you don't see them. 
Because remember, if you don't have an exact target, I don't let you just okay. scry as well for okay, general. Okay, that's fine. I don't feel um, like... While you're doing that, okay. Steve, wits awareness, please. Uh, you can do your normal roll, though, because you are on alert because you know something's nearby. So I'll let you use your full dice. I'm going to willpower that. And you do have Zach by you. Split the party, though. Damn, guys, that's a great idea. Oh, no, it's fine. This is that's fine. better. Three. As you're listening on your headset, let me double check. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, stealth isn't this guy's skill. Um, <laughs> you hear, I mean, you can hear the faintly the waves, but of the, the water against the shore, but you hear the unmistakable sound of something big breaking the surface of the water and something like a tink, like something hit the side of the boat as they were coming out of the water. Okay. Like somebody, you know, bumped the boat with something as they were getting coming out. But it's dead ahead of you and right, like, in the shadowed area in front of you. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring up Oblivion Sight. Okay. While also and The shadows you. fall away. And what else are you doing? And also just saying, hey, guys, over here. And when okay. the shadows fall away, in the shadow coming out of the water, moving towards you, it's a man you've met. It's a man you know. And a man you hate. Granger. Granger's here. Is coming out. He's wearing full suited chainmail. <laughs> Slips in the water and walks right along the bottom. Because <laughs> he doesn't float. He doesn't need to breathe. So. Nope. And in his hands, the sound that you pretty sure made the tink as he accidentally bumped the blade against the boat. He's got a rather large hand and a half sword. Hmm. What many call the bastard sword. As he comes out of the water and he's moving straight towards you. It's not, you're pretty sure he doesn't know you can see him. Okay. But he's coming towards you. Is there any cover that I can... You're at the entrance. You can hide behind a Cadillac. Yeah, no, that's not going to help. Um. Okay, so is he behind us? now we're lock and i are nope he's between you he's around the boats because you guys went over and went around the corner of the boat because he was the boats were hiding your view mm -hmm. so but where you are you can blink straight back to steve because it was a straight line shot okay but he's between you and him okay but more to your where from you're facing steve on your right some so you could still get between him i'm gonna get right back, back to steve lock can probably intercept him about the time he reaches steve okay that's fine so i'll blink back and okay. That is Dex Athletics again. Oh. The last one. Okay, that is four, five, six, six. Yeah. To go back. You, I mean, it's you don't have to roll by the way for the blink back. Oh, okay. It's a quick, you okay. know, because you're right back to it. Uh, the only time you need a dex athletics is if I'm to dodging. Blink is if you're uneven terrain, rough terrain, something that might oh okay cause you to trip. I was because a little confused really, on that. Yeah, it's literally just a straight move. If there's reason to be worried about how you're moving, you have to worry about that. So Lily was there beside you, and now she's not. Uh huh. Locke is going to um, rouse prowess through pain. Okay. So she's got toughness up. She's got prowess through pain up. Um, she did not get hungrier. Oh, even better. <laughs> They were sticking with two. And I assume you're taking off as you're doing it because you can rouse it while running. You don't have yeah. to. And a yeah. lot comes around and Lily's there beside Steve and she sees his Granger at a full run. I'm pulling my gun. Comes out of the, out of, from behind the boats and Steve's sitting there. Mm -hmm. And Locke, you're going to get there at about the exact time he reaches Steve. So Lily was moving while he was running. What is Steve doing first? Let me get his actions. Okay, does Granger see that I've seen him? He obviously knows you've had to at least hear him. Okay. Because the chain mail is not quiet. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm going to just sit still for the moment. And I am going to attack him. Because, well, he, he's obviously attacking me. I'm released from my, my vow to Esmeralda to not kill him. Um... <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to take the, the blow when he hits, goes to hit me and then I'm going to touch of oblivion 
can it's going to be a little more difficult because he's in chain mail so you can't touch any bare part of him um it's harder to get hold of him with the metal between it but there's bare spots you can i'll try i'll make the attempt to yeah you can go for the hand or whatever and as he's running you hear him yelling at you you die now boy Where's our walkie-talkies, Granger? <laughs> Slacking off on the job. Okay, so Lily's planning to shoot. <laughs> You're using which bullets? I am using standard bullets for him. Okay, you hadn't switched clip yet. Of course. So a couple things going to happen at once. Lily will get her shot off first because he's running into her. Okay. And then it's going to become Steve, Locke, Zach doesn't... I mean, Zach wasn't told to attack yet, but Zach's going to jump in too after Steve, Locke, and Granger go around. He's going to be the slowest in the group because, well, he didn't know what the fuck this is, you know? Mm -hmm. I got five on it. You got five? I got five on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get his sheet real quick. Make sure I'm not rolling too many dice. I'm not going to cheat on him. Death Athletics. Oh, yeah. That's not good. Two and you are using your fifty cal. Mm-hmm. Ba boom. Ba boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plus four. So you did six damage to him. Good. Reduced by his armor. Okay. Because it counts as armor. Um, Where did I hit him? Uh, we'll determine that based on how much damage you do, because okay. that's going to make a difference. Okay. So it goes to four. He only takes two superficial. So it clips him in the side as he runs, but doesn't slow him down. Okay. Let me mark that for too superficial. I think I can use uh, my pin on his character sheet because one way or another, I don't have a feeling I'm going to need this character sheet anymore. <laughs> but yes, it doesn't stop. And he comes charging in. So let's everybody, let Steve can do his roll. Since you're trying to hit him at the same time, you can roll your normal arms of arm run. Locke, you're going to do... Uh, touch of Oblivion. Or right. Touch of Oblivion. Locke's going to do Strength Burl. Um, I'm going to also... I'm going to Feral... Um, get my claws out. I rouse for Feral Weapons. Um, I get hungrier. I'm at three hunger. Ooh, and your beast <laughs> says, just eat him. Eat him! Just destroy <laughs> him. He's nothing. He doesn't matter. <sighs> just don't Diablo you. Because you don't want that asshole in your head. No, 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 no. You don't want that asshole in your head. She's very anti-Diablo right now. If she wasn't before, she is now. As he comes in with his blade, Steve, roll intelligence awareness. Okay. One, two, three, four. You realize something as he's coming in. Your memories were of him as almost an expert swordsman. That's what all your memories say. Mm -hmm. But the way he's moving with the weapon suggests he's mm -hmm. not as good as he, as you think he was or you remember <laughs> he was. Because he's a fucking narcissist. <laughs> right. <laughs> His, as someone who is, you know, you've got numerous dots in, in melee, you trained with weapons. Um, his form is sloppy. His grip is not quite what it should be. It's a little bit clumsy with his, his weapon. Mm. It's obvious that your memories of him being um, beating you more than you beat him don't seem to match up with the way he's handling <laughs> his blade. <laughs> so, how many successes? Four. Lock? Um... Lock got oh shit oh oh no oh no mm -hmm. um I got a messy critical nice. so that's one two well that's four um five six seven eight messy eight messy uh sorry no that's awesome that's, that's, we're starting early <laughs> we're all round in already well. <laughs> Eight messy. Steve, mm -hmm. give me a Dex Athletics check, please. Oh no. I am going to willpower that because that oh. came out as two. Yeah. 
Because remember, Steve said he was going to take the blow from Granger. Four. Four. Four? That's enough. Um, as you go and step to take the blow to touch him, Locke barrels into him <laughs> from the back. <laughs> him into you. And you like almost touch out. Locke instead. Oh, shit. Because he actually beat you on the roll. Okay. Uh, but you managed, because of your dex roll, just in time you pulled your hand back before you oblivioned Locke. Just huh. in time. That would have been so bad. And Locke, you take him down and just bowl his ass over. And in the process, because of how many you rolled, uh, his sword, as obviously he had the wrong grip, his sword goes flying off to the side. <laughs> now, because it was a grapple, you don't do full damage, but he did take a damage from that. Oh, no. No. I was doing fucking damage. Oh, shit. Well, then I in that case, you have 10. Out. Yeah. He takes... There's a five difference. Plus your claws makes it seven. Mm-hmm. Minus his armor. Mm-hmm. Five. Ha- or no, not nope. halved. Not halved. <laughs> so... Yeah. Locke, you manage... With your supernatural strength, you manage to rip your claws into his arm, shred the chainmail armor, and tear through it with your claws going right through the links and just rip down the whole side of his arm, his weapon arm, no less. That's why his sword went flying, rendering it pretty damn hurt. <laughs> not as hurt as it's going to be. <laughs> and he's on the ground at this point. Good. So my shots are nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, now Zach doesn't know what to do because Locke has just fucked him up. Come on. Come on. Dog pile. Okay. (laughs) No, Zach comes over and just because almost kicks Locke. Ah. Almost. But managed to get a good solid kick to the ribs in on Granger while he's down. <laughs> he can't get too close in there because then, you know, two sets of claws tearing and shit might be a little bit too much. But gets another kick in the ribs and you actually hear the ribs snap. <laughs> I mean, it's an unmistakable sound. That poor Malkavian thought he stood a chance. He never has stood a chance. <laughs> no, he hasn't. <laughs> because he always thought he was better mm-hmm. than he is and used Dominate to make himself Better, Better than what he was. Mm-hmm. Than he was. Okay, so what's everyone's plans this next round? <laughs> fuck him up. Oh, yeah, y'all fucking him up. There was never a hope in Granger, let me tell you. But we're going to let y'all finish this. I'll shoot him again, because now he's on the ground. I can get a uh, good shot. Careful. Locke is... Are you literally oh. splayed over him? Lily, don't worry him. about it. Okay. Lily, okay. don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Do you know how I have toughness up I and I have... You got four? Oh. Yeah. Lock, Lock can take it. So okay. you're gonna. Well, that's your four. Mm-hmm. I've got to figure mm-hmm. out the dice rolls here. Um, it's actually he's prone. Yep. <laughs> we do melee first, then shooting. So well, you did shooting four. first last time. That was because they were closing. Okay. Because of range. Okay. So now we're gonna do first Lock and and Granger. Five. Yep. He almost manages to. To get free to put some leverage to your arm and to hurt you a bit, but you've come to realize that he doesn't have the supernatural strength you do, and you just effortlessly bat his arms out of the way and tear into him again. <laughs> so it's five. Five he had, successes. He had so. four, so that's mm-hmm. one plus that. So you did three damage, non halved. This time, as you tear into him, batting his arms away. You cut through his neck. (gasps) And you see him start to... He screams one last time. And starts to shrivel up and die. He only had five health lock. (laughs) He was never as good as he thought he was. fuck. Okay. And as he Hmm. disappears, you hear this. Hi, Malik. I dropped the clip. <laughs> and you hear a growl with it. Mm-hmm. I dropped the clip and uh, pop in my other one. Okay, that's your my rapid ra- reflexes. My rapid reflex. Mm-hmm. And 
when the clapping starts, your heads turn to look. And perched, crouch down on top of this boat. And I take off the headphones. Is Malik. Mm -hmm. And beside him is about an 11 foot tall monstrosity of muscle and hair and bristling fangs. Mm -hmm. Crouch down with him. Steve, you still have Oblivion side up, don't you? Mm -hmm. Something odd about Malik. Something very odd about Malik. There's a shape superimposed with him. It's a dark like shadow around him with eyes that are burning a fire. Mm. And it's like almost like a slight haze around him that seems to be part of him and with him. But it's so close to his body, it's like in him. Hmm. Do I have any idea what that means? Or what, what that means about him? What you're seeing, the shadow, reminds you of some of the ghosts you've seen around town when you've used Oblivion Sight. Except this one. You've never seen the ghost mostly manifested in a body before. Hmm. Okay. And I, I, Lily... I, I yeah. will let you roll wits or no uh, wits auspects, and I start talking to the rest of the team over comms to describe it, saying there's something wrong with him. There was something really, really strange about Malik. Four, five, six, seven. Twelve. Seven. That's good enough for your since the unseen to see it as well. Hmm. I want to roll a cult on that. Go ahead, intelligence occult. You've been told there's something seriously mm -hmm. off about him. I got five. Five. That's a pretty good number there. That's enough for a uh, a hard thing. And you're not sure. I mean, you didn't think it's possible for Kindred. But it's almost like reports people have had of when ghosts have used their body to use their body for something. Though, in every case you've ever heard of that, the ghosts doing it normally um, are sloppy. It's hard to control the body. This one isn't quite like that. It's more, uh, from what you're seeing, it, instead of being a possession, maybe it's more of a merging or a... But also, you kind of recognize the spirit. You've seen him before, long ago, long time ago. It was a gangrel that your sire had feuds with. That you're pretty sure is the one that Gabriel supposedly had killed. Though without a body. I open fire on him. Bunch of things are going to happen at once. <laughs> you're going to open fire. I know the Krinos form BSD with him is going to be leaping into the fray. I'm pretty sure Zach's going bear form at this point. Mm -hmm. And okay. y'all got to deal with Malik as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me roll to see if he's quick enough to beat your rapid reflexes as your gun comes up. Cool. Okay. So you're going to fire. And it is the incendiary yep. round. Yep, and as you go to fire, the oddest thing happens around him. Don't all the debris, all the bits and pieces of everything, all the little, anything light nearby, starts whirling around him. Oh, that'll catch fire too. And spinning around. Mm -hmm. And like some sort of weird tempest. Mm -hmm. And both Steve and Lily, since you can see the spirit... You see the red eyes glow a little bit when this happens. Mm -hmm. As all the bits and pieces around start this weird, almost a tornado whirlwind effect around it. So you can roll your dice. Okay. We'll let you get your shot. Locke, you're going to be meeting a black spiral dancer, you and Zach. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be meeting a black spiral seven. dancer. You got seven. Mm. 
roll too many dice. Hang on, I think I rolled too many dice for him. Yep, I did. Let me re-roll that. I'm not going to give him extra dice just for the sake. I'm not, you know, going to roll the same dice you do. Seven? Yep. Oh, with a crit. With a crit? Yeah. You're pretty sure the bullet would have hit him. Pretty sure. Except all that whirling debris bumped the bullet just enough that it almost got him. And you can see the look in his eyes when it happened. That slight bit of panic at first where he thought he was about to be shot. And it just barely slipped by. Where did the bullet land? Because it's going to in- ignite whatever it hits. Um, he was sitting on top of one of the boats, so it up into the sky. Fucking shit. Probably going to land in the Potomac. <laughs> if not, by then it's burnt out. It's not like, you know, these rounds are pure fire until they But I'm land. blanking out. Okay. Wait a minute. He's not moving yet. we got to do everybody else. I know. Do everybody else, but okay, I'm go blanking ahead. out. Lock, do yours. Um, I got one, two, three, four, five, six successes, because I'm apparently meeting, uh... Six successes? That's not bad. Zach, uh... You can hear the shift. So you got six. Let's see, four, five. And I throw a die in the floor. The black spiral leaps into you. But with the leap, it gives you a slight advantage as you see his trajectory. And you've been in these kind of fights before. Uh-huh. And you're not where he was planning to land, but your claws are. And your claws cut deep into him. And the black spiral dancer screams. Now, Zach's not fighting this turn because he's still shape changing in, in the midst of this combat. But he didn't even get a piece of you as your claws cut into him. Lily. You see, as you're getting ready to blink out of there, something you never expected to see. Right beside Malik. There's another spirit. And it's one you recognize. Your fiancé reaches out. Your dead fiancé. And you see his hands grab hold of the shadow that is inside Malik and start pulling it away from him. And the shadow, you actually see it turn without Malik turning. You see the ghost that's inside Malik, his head whip around. And all the debris fall to the ground as this, whatever it is inside Malik, detaches itself and begins to wrestle on top of this boat with your dead fiance. And when this happens, you see something like shock pass in front of Malik's eyes. But he leaps down from the top of the the vehicle. But unlike the Black Spiral, he doesn't leap right into combat. um, Because only an idiot leaps right into a gun. But he drops to the ground. And now it's everyone's actions this round. And yes, your dead fiancé is fighting on top with this monstrosity of Black Shadow. Instead of blanking out, I will roll. What's everyone's actions this turn? Zach is uh, bear forming beside Locke. And you're going to double tag a lupine. Uh Uh-huh. It's date night. Date night. Wow. I thought you weren't dating. <laughs> no, we're not. It's a business date. <laughs> no, business date. <laughs> and Steve, you're standing over a dead Granger. So I guess you don't get to eat him because Locke fucked him up. Yeah. And what is Steve doing? Lily, what are you planning to do? I'm going to shoot Malik again. Okay. All right. Now, I have a question. I'm, I had the uh, touch of Oblivion Prime, but I didn't use it. You didn't have to make a rouse check then. You make a rouse check when you use it. Okay. Yep. Actually, no, yeah, because you never got to touch him, you had to draw back to keep from hitting lock. Mm-hmm. You never used it. Don't do the rouse check. Yeah, don't the, don't yeah. do the next rouse. You've already roused to use it. So Yeah, if you've okay. already done the rouse to use it because okay. you drew back, at the, you never actually tried to use it because right. that was what the dex was to see if you could react quick enough to knock. Yeah. Okay. So who am I closer to? 
So this turn, I'm going to have Zach go first because, well, well... who is he asked? Who is he closer to? He is closer to Malik than the Black Spiral. Okay. Because Locke went to, to meet the Black Spiral who was jumping. So they're kind of closer uh, off to the side. Malik is closer to Lily and Steve. Okay. So we'll have... It's going to be Zach first against the Black Spiral, and then Locke gets the, the second hit. Let me get Zach's dice. Four, four. And <laughs> pretty sweet. Zach comes in and brings his paw to come down on this Crinosporm Lupine. And the Lupine just comes in with a punch straight in as it's happening. And I mean, you hear a crack. And that crack is that bear's paw flipping backwards as it's broken from the impact. And you hear the bear just do this roar of pain as the lupine goes, ah! Now, Locke, you do your roll, though. Seven Might crit. Seven with a crit? Mm-hmm. Now, he's got less dice now. Actually, he's got to use even less than that because he can only use dex athletics to defend against you. And while he's Rah, celebrating his hit. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Locke gets another piece of him. Got five, so seven puts two plus two more because it's a brawl. So you do four to him, not halved. So your claws rip into him. Now, the damage you did last turn, you can already see it started to close. Yeah. But you've reopened them all back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I- I've got a silver dagger. I, but you're not as good with melee, though. I'm not. Yep. I'm not. But give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Lily is shooting. Yep. And I got five. Five? This time, without all that spinning shit that was throwing, messing with your, your bullet, smacking it with a whole bunch of things, your bullet actually manages... To strike true, you get two successes on six dice. So that's three plus four. Seven, seven. damage. Incendiary. Fire. Aggravated. Mm-hmm. Aggravated. Mm-hmm. And Hope a he, bitch bot to fire bane. He catches fire. <laughs> okay. And it doesn't start going out. <laughs> but he's still on his feet. Mm-hmm. What were you doing, Steve? Don't touch him. <laughs> no, I'm not going to touch him now. <laughs> um, he's going to bow into Lily after she just shot him. So, I mean. He's going to play. Okay. He hasn't got his attack this turn. So, Lily's not going to blink before he gets okay. hold of her if Steve ain't in the way. That's true. I'll be in the way. Oh, shit. Okay, Steve, you're going to do your attack. You're going to use Dex Melee for this, though, because you're trying to make sure you're in the way. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, oh, there's another willpower. Oh, crap. I'm about to make you start using my dice. <laughs> <laughs> he used all of his good rolls last night. I know, right? Playing the uh, Witch is Dead. It's not two. looking good for Steve, I can tell you. What's how many successes? Three, four, five, six. Six, nice. With a crit. Yeah. With a crit. Six with a crit. You step in, and the two of you clash. And it's Malik's claws versus Steve, who's... Got plate. Plate armor. <laughs> or wearing his uh, armored vest. Mm-hmm. And the fire is the problem. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Raw Shrek for Steve, please. Because you're now in it. Any un- only unspent willpower plus one extra die. How many willpower you got left that you haven't spent? Two. You get three dice. Okay. Yeah. Locke has the right look on her face. Two. That's all you really need because you're not in a burning building. But unfortunately, Steve, your attack 
you manage to fend him off Lily, and you don't get caught by the claws. But your clothes do catch on fire. You're going to take two aggravated okay. as you're bur- starting to burn. Now, this is going to be a new round. What is everyone doing? Okay, okay. Uh, you can see that already Malik is slowing from all the fire on him. Mm-hmm. Because, Steve, you know he was a better fighter than you. You could feel it. Mm-hmm. Except he's a little distracted, a little bit off. Just a little. Because he's on fire. What's everyone doing? Zach is going to keep fighting. Rawr. Five. You got five? This black spiral has realized who the real threat is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. Make me stronger. I already have it up. <laughs> and you almost were quick enough to escape the claws coming in. Mm-hmm. Almost. But she still manages to get hold of you. Okay. And you take three aggravated. Okay. Nope. And I'm going to throw that immediately into strength and dex. But while she's doing that, Zach, with one working paw, takes a swipe at the backside. That's a good roll. Let's see what... That's nice for that roll. But Zach, being the fighter he is, doesn't try to swipe the back of the lupine. Zach uses his working paw to swipe the legs out from under the lupine, tripping it. And it tumbles to the ground after it cut lock. It's going to put it at a, a bit of a disadvantage last turn. See, Zach works well with, with her. He does. So what are the other two? Lily? Rapid reflex. I'm going to change my magazine. Okay. I'm changing it to silver this time. Okay. Just to be prepped. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to, sh- to pop one off on Malik. Okay. So you're going to get to go after he, him and Steve tussle yep, a bit. That's fine. Okay. Steve, you'll be making another raw track after. You two go. Okay. This time you're in deep shit because you're on fire. Right. There's a river. Yeah, I may use that. Meaning I lose the best, but, you know. How many dice am I getting? Not enough. Yep, that's what I thought. How many you got, Steve? What you got? Okay, what am I rolling here? For the uh... Uh, Dex Brawl or Dex Melee. Actually, no, Dex Brawl because you don't have a... A weapon. Okay. Unless you're using that dagger it's, that you guy you had found out of the uh, temple. Well, if he's already, if he's already burning, can't he do the withering shit? He's gonna have to touch the burning. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not. That's not. Okay, the, okay. I, I was just wondering. I, yeah, I was like, go yeah. ahead. Touch him. Touch the burning guy. <laughs> no, no. Are you trying to fight him or push him off you because he's burning? Pushing. Oh, pushing. Okay. Him off. That is a different role. You can use uh, Dex athletics, strength athletics, or your uh, brawl. They're all the same. Okay. I didn't know which one. Remember, you can rouse and add an extra die if you want to. Um. Wow. Th- that is bad. Uh, I'm going to have to lose another willpower on that because I only got one. He's down to one willpower. That makes it two total. Yeah, that doesn't work. You try to push him away and Malik, still on fire, bear hugs you and slams you to the ground. You take three aggravated from that. Wow. Good thing I'm talking. And now Lily gets her shot. I got five with a crit. Five? Let me roll his defense on this one, which is down dice because he's been Engaged. dealing with that. Right. It's his second engagement. And actually the penalty because he's crippled status at this point mm-hmm. due to wounds. You got five? Mm-hmm. With a crit. Your second blow... Your second shot rings true. Uh, As he had slammed Steve to the ground and stood up from his slam, you managed to put the bullet right into his chest. And when it hits, it literally blows bits of kindred and fire out the back of him as he falls to the ground, burning. Oh, good. He's done. I yell out, Steve, run to the water. Steve, willpower yep. check. You only have two dice now. Mm. 
Nothing. Your beast screams in your head. It burns, burns, this hurts, it's too much, it's too much, run, flee. So I'm curious. Yes. Lily's got this rapid reflex thing going on. Mm-hmm. And actually, I, I might have that bullshit too, I don't know. Um, hey, I have it too, uh, who knew? Um, <laughs> so, I've had it literally since day one. Um, so, is there any way either of us could pop off a one, two, three on an air horn? real fast to warn Tabitha that there's a burning person coming her way and to maybe... Uh, Steve is running that. towards the water. Okay. Uh, because the beast is going to go to get out of the fire. It knows there's water there. The beast okay. is going to put it's him going dead to go in the, to the water. water. So He's beast fine. is not stupid. Okay, go No, ahead. it's not. Let's not worry about that. <laughs> it right. wants to survive. Yeah, that's why it's running. It's trying to survive from the fire. So it's going to run to the fire. Okay. So I think we're actually... Okay, no, I'm, then I will... I will yeah, rapid reflexes that. let you avoid having... Uh, to take the dice penalty when uh, getting shot at in open territory. And it allows you to do a quick action, uh, something like, you know, change a magazine, uh, mm-hmm. something fast like that, quick enough that you don't like lose your Like popping off an air horn. Yeah. Popping off an air horn yeah. would have worked. Shouting uh, something out. Shouting something out. Yeah. Um, you know, grabbing a grenade from your that's, you know, hooked on your back or pulling a weapon that was holstered. Yeah. All that can be done with a rapid like reflex a and still get a, an action that turn. So. Yeah, it's never really been a problem for a lock. No. No. You know? Well, when you use claws. I mean, you used it once before when you were in the uh, warehouse getting shot at. You didn't get the two-die penalty. pretty much the only time she uses it when she's, when she's getting shot at. Yep. Yeah. So. So, Malik goes down and... You can see that your fiance seems to be still wrestling with this, whatever it is. Well, I, I can't do shit about that. No, you can't. <laughs> it's not something you can affect. I, I can't. Yay, Andy, go. <laughs> yeah. Lock, you, on the other hand, are dealing with this lupine. Yeah, okay. Hey, great. So we're going new route. Steve, you're help. out. Yay. You're out of it, Steve. You're out, Steve. You're running to the fi- to the mm-hmm. water to put out, and you're pretty hurt, oh. actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the fire okay. aggregated. Ag- aggravated, yeah. Ouch. But I got more. Yes, you do. How much How much health you got left, Steve? Four. Four left? Yeah, he's still good. That's over half. That's mm-hmm. hurting. Mm-hmm. But that's still good. He was on fucking fire, and he still has four. <laughs> yep. I forgot. I should have defied Bane. Would that have helped? Yes. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> I didn't I didn't rouse it, though, so. You could have yeah. roused it in reaction if you had thought about having it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, next time. Yep. I'm not retroactiving that. What'd no. you get, Locke? So I have a question. What? I have one um, um, bad onk. I have one, and then two regular crits. Is that a messy crit? Or did I just not count the red one? No, is it the red is a crit? The red's a crit, and then I have two black crits. It's a messy crit. Okay, that's fine. One, it's so it's four, five, six, seven. Seven messy crit. Okay. Now, for a messy crit, I'm trying to think of what we can do with this one. It's not a position where you're in, in danger of getting oblivion. Okay. I know what I'm going to give you. It's not... The, the one that if, and all when all else fails we'll deal with it minute seven yes. Steve why have you cursed my dice <laughs> I'm I'm genuinely curious I'm rolling 11 dice and I have <laughs> four successes on 11 dice lock you won that one okay by three four or five for your for the claws so you do five non have superficial now he healed they heal three a turn. Mm-hmm. I need to break out the knife, the mm-hmm. dagger next. But you did five. Oh, more. Lily's about to lay into him with silver bullets. Oh, that's true. Let me just keep let, keep keep him like, tenderized. Keep, keep, keep him tenderized. Yeah. <laughs> and your claws, once again, this big old monster thing tries to bring both claws to bear, and Locke, being who Locke is, she just kind of ducks under him. She's squirming. And once thing. again swipes her claws right across the same spot that it started to close the wounds again. <laughs> Opening them even further, undoing all the healing this thing has attempted to do. That's just gonna Leaving get him annoying. quite wounded. <laughs> and then Bear gets in. You know, actually the lupine was on the ground, so no, he tried to sweep 
from the ground as Locke came in, and she just kind of ducked past the claws and gutted, ripped him in the gut. And the bear comes in. Quit cursing my dice, Steve. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. No, they roll good when I'm rolling for Zachary. Roll for the Dex Athletics. And Zachary's jaws clamp down on this lupine's head as it's biting. And the skull is holding, but the lupine is screaming as this is happening. Okay. So you've got Locke cutting the, the basically the abdomen up on this lupine while Zachary the bear is eating his head. Or trying. And Steve's in the water. Now Lily's shot goes out. Silver this time, huh? Yep, silver. Four, five, six. I'm giving him a big penalty because he's on the ground. She beat me by five successes. <laughs> Plus four damage. And it's silver. So that's nine damage, silver. It ain't gonna heal. That's a dead loop. Plus what was done. <laughs> <laughs> that's a dead loop. <laughs> Yeah, the bullets strike home. <laughs> and, Locke, you feel this lupine bucking as you were cutting into it. And you just see, it's almost like it just suddenly goes limp. As it lays there. With a wound, it can't heal. Even with the wounds it can heal, it's been pushed so far past that. That the silver is what finally kills it. And you have a dead lupine under you. Steve, once you get in the water and went out, you mm -hmm. come back to your senses, though you're pretty fucking in pain. Mm -hmm. And Lily, you see as this black shadow thing just kind of gets pulled apart by your ex-fiance till it dissipates. And the spirit, you thought spirits could fly, but you actually see him kind of climb down and jump down from the top of the boat. I walk over to him. I got to roll for something. And everyone present can see this form as it almost shimmers into view in front of everybody, taking not corporal form, but as a ghostly shape in front of everyone here on the docks. And you all get that shiver of cold as he looks at Lily and you can hear him speak. I have done what I stayed around for. I have protected you as long as I can. It's time for me to leave. Thank you, Andy. I am done. Oblivion will have no hold on me. And you see this shape dissipate into sparkling light as it fades from view totally. And every kindred here, you get an odd sense of contentment and peace as it does this. And it kind of renews you in some ways. I'll give everyone a free willpower point restored for this. Get one back if you spent it. As he fades away. You don't understand what it means to be when he said that he's, you know, free of Oblivion's call. But you know, it didn't scare him. He seemed to be very happy with it. Lily falls to her knees. Oh no. Mark will declaw and go over. And Zachary, you see him de-bear, and his arm is pretty damn broken. Uh, and she's like, one second. And goes and sits next to Lily, and it's just kind of quiet in there.
the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to end this session right here with perhaps her fiance finally resolved that last passion that kept him and that last of his fetters and achieved what most kindred or most dead never can transcendence freed from the shackles of being stuck behind the shroud and I'd like to thank everyone for coming um, honestly I expected the fight to be a little tougher except Steve cursed my dice <laughs> and I as storyteller I refuse to fudge my dice I will not change the results of the roll to suit the story no matter what and they beat him fair and square because my dice were rolling horrible and that's the way it rolls so thank you all for coming. If you'd like to join us on the Discord to talk about this kind of emotional ending to the episode. <laughs> Holy hell. Rillin had no idea this was coming. I <laughs> know. Um, for those who don't understand, that's a, a little bit of a tie-in to Wraith, but um, it resolves part of a storyline that she's had following her. She always wondered why the ghost was still there. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want, you know, if you want to see back content, they're on, Am on Twitch, they're on YouTube. Over there in the chat, look over there. Check out all these other friends that we have. Lots yeah. of friends, great channels. Um, Vancouver by Night is on now Monday nights. Um, Sanguine underscore Nights comes on Wednesday right before we do Our DC by Night uh, mm -hmm. vignettes. Uh, they're finally back, which is New Orleans by Night. Great mm -hmm. stream. Check them out. We love them. Macabre Derek on, you know, after this. His Detroit overalls, some good shit. Um, Ishvel comes on every Saturday at 1 p.m. It's D&D 5th edition. Viking themed, got a flying boat. It's great shit. Black Death Chronicles are on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Holy hell, it's some great dark storytelling by Tam Shoe. It's amazing. And um, anyone, oh, if you like DD, you want to play some Pathfinder 2nd Edition? Katie, <laughs> right there. Hit with K Cunning on Twitter. Uh, all the Twitter of the cast is right here in the chat. We've got a, a link in the chat. Hit her up on Twitter. Hit her up on Lock on Discord. Um, she can tell you where to, to join her playing some Pathfinder, how to do it. Uh, because, you know, she does, she plays, she runs them. She can help you out with that if you want to play some games with a lot, you know, and support uh, their Patreon game. So if you want to support a really good Patreon of the Q Times, Jake Kyle, you know, we love Jake. We love Jake. He's a good guy. So um, I'd like to thank you all for coming. Anyone want to add anything? No, nope. thank nope. you all so much. And we will see you for Wednesday vignettes, hopefully. Good night. Good night.